Adding image recognition to your Claris FileMaker apps requires that you first create your own custom image classification machine learning model. And if you have the right tools, this process can be quite easy. This example demonstrates creating a model that classifies parts that are stored inside of a Claris FileMaker app. The first step, and probably the most labor intensive, is to create images of the items that you want your model to recognize. If you have a 360 product photography setup, then you're in great shape, but you really just need a camera or even an iPhone taking individual pictures or in burst mode. And the goal is to take as many pictures of each product in as many different angles as possible. The more perspectives, the better your model can learn to classify the items. Taking at least 50 pictures of each item should yield you good precision. And once you have your images, it's important to organize them into folders. Subfolder naming is important. The names of the folder is what your model will use to classify the images. Here you see we've used the text name and ID of each part that's in the inventory. Then you'll need a training folder and a testing folder, each with their own set of matching subfolders. You'll need one subfolder for each classification. In this example, you see we've got just these three parts. But if you had 100 parts, you would need 100 subfolders. Each of the subfolders should contain a mix of images, and not all the same image. In this example, 50 images were taken, and 30 or so went into the training, and the other 20 went into testing. But it's a good idea to mix as many different perspectives into each different folder as you can. Once you have your photos organized into these folders, you are ready to create your model. There are a lot of tools available to create vision models, but if you have access to a copy of Xcode, there's a great tool that makes this process very easy. You can open up your copy of Xcode. Under the Xcode menu, you'll see an option for Open Developer Tool and you'll choose the option for Create ML. Create ML takes all the complexity out of model training while still producing really powerful core ML models. At this point, you just choose where you want to create your document, and then you'll see a screen where you can select from different templates. In this case, we're creating an image classification template, so we'll select that option here. And at this point, you can name your project and choose the location where you want to save it. Now, once you're inside your CreateML project, you really only have a couple of things to do. You'll notice here that there is a plus sign under training data. By simply selecting that plus sign, you will then direct it to where your training folder is. The same is true for testing. And really, that's it. Now, all you have to do is just hit the play button above the word train to start the training process. And after your training is done, you'll be taken to the evaluation screen. And here you can see that we have 100% precision and 100% recall. This is outstanding. This means that we can really expect good precision from our model. Next, we'll move on to the preview screen. And here we can drag a couple of images just to test out our model. So here's some other images that were taken. And then we can see that it's testing these against our model with 99% confidence. Again, this is outstanding. We'll move on to the output section. And you'll notice here that it has three class labels. This means that it identified three different subfolders, or in our case, we had three different products that we wanted to identify. And here you can see that it takes the label of the classification directly from the name of the subfolder. That's why subfolder naming is very important to your models. And finally, the last step is just to hit the Get button and to choose the location to save your .ml model file. Now that we have our model created, we can add it to our FileMaker app. A couple quick notes about the FileMaker app. You see that we've created a layout named CoreML. This is not functionally necessary, but it's a good idea to help you test out your model. But what is necessary is that we create a container field that's going to store the model and help load the model, and then another container field that will help us test the model. So first, back in the container for the model, you will select your file, that's the .ml model file that you output from CreateML, and simply drop it in your container field. Now you can test out the model by dragging images into the test image folder, and you're seeing that you're getting some results. We'll test another one, and we see that in both cases, we're getting the proper classification. 
So let's take a little bit closer look at what's going on in the FileMaker file. First, you'll see that we have two different calculation fields. Both of them are returning different values from the evaluation of the test image. Let's take a look at those. In the case of the calc ML, we're using the function that's called compute model. Compute model returns a JSON object containing the result of the core ML model evaluation. Specifically, it will return a JSON string that might look something like this. Here, we're naming the model parts, we're indicating the type of the model, and we're pointing it to the container that holds the model. This is the container that holds the test image, not the container that's running the model. The second calculation uses a similar function, but in this case, we're using the JSON get element function to extract a specific value. The value that we want to get is the value with the highest precision. So we'll enter confidence lower limit and return at least one. Return at least one means it's going to give us just the value in the JSON string that has the highest precision. So if we go back and look at our data, you'll see that the value with the highest precision is the one on the top, the spark plug E3. And specifically, the element that we want to extract is classification. That's what gives us our spark plug E3, E310. That's the value that we see here as a result of that calculation. Now let's take a look at the scripts. First, you see we have an on launch script that calls another script called load ML model. And this script uses the configure machine learning model script step. Specifically, we've called out that the operation is going to be a vision model, and we're looking for a model named parts. We named this model when we ran the compute model function before and named it parts. And here is the name of the container that is storing the model. Now you could run this on launch, like in this application, or you could simply run the configure machine learning model script step just before you want to use the model. In our case, we're going to use the model by running a script that sets a variable using the same calculation that we looked at earlier. In this case, it's going to grab that value and then perform a search in our inventory database and present the results of the search to the user. And just to have some fun with it, We've created a copy of the script that we will donate to shortcuts, allowing us to use Siri voice commands to initiate the search. Now we can load the application onto the device and test out our model. Now we have the app on a device. I've already loaded the model on startup using a FileMaker script. And the use case here is that someone's out in the shop and they're working on a vehicle and they need to find a fuel filter or spark plug or headlight gasket or something like that in their inventory. But they don't have the entire part catalog memorized. So all they have to do is just take a picture using the device and the app will find the appropriate part for them. And then they can see where their stock is and all the other type of information that's stored inside the app. I've also hooked this up to Siri and I've already donated the script that does the core ML processing to a Siri shortcut just to kind of have a little bit of fun with it. But let's try this out. Hey Siri, what part is this? And there we see it correctly found the spark plug. Let's say, for example, we want to look for another part, you know, just to kind of show you how the core ML actually works. Let's try this one more time. Hey Siri, what part is this? And there we see again, the machine learning model has correctly identified the part and allowed our user to search for the part by simply taking a photo of it with their device, all using their FileMaker app.